Hi everyone, this is Lori with Dockery's Dream Dolls. Now I've seen a lot of videos lately um, titled, What's in My Bag? And the best one I've seen thus far would be Trailer Park Tammy's version of What's in My Bag. If you haven't seen it yet, I strongly recommend you do. It is absolutely hilarious. Now I was thinking if I were to do this type of video, it would be really lame. Um, I don't put a lot of things in my bag, um, just the necessities and my keys. So I thought that I would do a reborning version of what's in my bag. So I'm going to do a, uh, rebor a ethnic reborn what's in my bag video. So I'm going to start with my paints. I use Genesis heat set paints. This is how I store them. Nice little clear containers that stack up nicely and securely. So I can see that I've got my prim primary colors here, my more complicated colors here, my flesh tones and my varnishes are up here and up here with my varnishes I also keep my color wheel I recommend to anybody that is reborning or painting or dealing with colors period that you get a color wheel one of the greatest things that you can do with this when it comes to reborning is let's say for example you're doing a baby and the color is too red so what you would do is you go from red, go to the opposite side of the color wheel, and here we have green. So we know that we would need to use the color green to tone down the red. And who would think that? Who would think, oh, well, it's too red. Let me just slap some green on it. It works, I'm telling you. Um, another nifty little tool that I have here, and I think I got this from Precious Baby Dust. It is a skin stamping tool. So you use this with the varnish and it gives like a 3D skin effect. It's really neat. Um, put all that away. The next thing I have in my bag is my Prisma pencils. Now I started off by buying this because it was the only thing that I could find at Joanne Fabrics. Um, I later found out that actually Michael's is definitely the place to go when it comes to um, Prisma colors. But from this set, the colors that I use most often would be the white, sometimes I use the yellow, some of the blues, and the reds for capillaries. Um, I like using the aquamarine. I use it a lot um, for doing veins. If you dip it in your thinning medium and then you draw out your veins, it gives you a lot of control in the placement and the flow of the initial um, part of putting on the veins. Now once I discovered that Michaels was the place to go for Prisma pencils, I went and I got, these ones are mostly for hair and eyebrows. So I have the colors here that you would need for brown, light brown, dark blonde, um, reddish tones, and also this one, black cherry. Um, that one is for part of the beds of the fingernails. And another thing that I found while I was there is a, I don't know what it's called. It's called colorless. But it's like a Prisma blending pencil. So in theory, what you do is you would sharpen it and then use this to blend your um, Prisma colors after you've placed them. And I can see this coming in handy when doing eyebrows, hair, and also the veins to kind of help spread and even out the color and get it some nice natural faded instead of placed effects on there. Um, next will be my brushes. Now, if you're new to reborning or you're interested in reborning but you're not sure yet, I recommend you don't invest in expensive brushes because number one, you're gonna wanna make sure that the type of paint that you're using is what you're gonna end up using and actually does work best for you. So there's the air dry paints and there's also the Genesis heat set paints. You can't use a brush that you've used on oil paints, Genesis heat set, um, on something like the air dry paints because they're acrylic. So you can't go in between the two with the brushes. 
And then also you'll find what works for other artists as far as brushes don't work as well for you. So another artist might say, oh, this is the best brush you have to have it, but then you go to use it and it's just not working the same for you. Um, so it's best to try that out with the least expensive version. And then if you find that you do like it and you love it, um, then I, I recommend from that point going on and investing in the, the more expensive ones for the ones that really, that you really do love and that you know work for you. Um, my favorite brushes, I'm a little addicted, would be the mop brushes. I have lots and lots of mop brushes. I have big mop brushes and I have teeny tiny little mop brushes, even teeny tinier little mop brushes. They're great for spreading out um, the colors and for getting into creases and for getting a nice feathering effect when um, you're doing blushing and such. Um, and then I have my finer detail brushes. And then I have my flats, my filberts, and my fans. And then I have scissors in here too because of course every once in a while you got to get brave and cut those brushes and make them work. And then I also have some round tipped ones. These ones really help when you're trying to get into a mouth, inside of the ear, up the nose. Um, these are really helpful for that. Now, one thing that I've learned on my brush journey is um, my favorite brush would be the Baby Strokes brush. Um, The reason why would be first and foremost, you're not going to lose a lot of hairs. Uh, you'll find in the less lesser quality brushes and even a lot of the more expensive brushes, you get a lot of hair loss and there's nothing like having to take a pair of tweezers and pluck hairs out of something you just painted. It's really frustrating. Um, also, they hold their shape really well, so you don't have to worry too much after you wash the brushes and they're drying about you know, making sure they maintain their shape perfectly because a lot of brushes, they just, it looks like a wilting flower after you've washed them, no matter what you do, unless you like wrap them up in a towel and keep them statuesque until they've dried. And the other reason why I prefer the Baby Strokes brush, let me see if I can get an example here. Okay. So right here I have a cheap brush. Right here I have a more expensive brush that I got from my art store. And right here I have the Baby Strokes brush. Um, I got my Baby Strokes brush from uh, Dolls by Sandy. So if you're interested, they're, they're pretty expensive, but they're worth it. They are absolutely worth it. Um, but when I go to clean my brushes and I have them soaking, the brush cleaner is taking off part of the uh, finish on the brushes and what ends up happening is that it leaves this goopy pink sub substance and it creates a bigger mess of my brushes while I'm trying to clean them up. Now I have not had this problem at all with the Baby Strokes brushes. So they hold their shape, the brushes aren't falling out and they don't create a bigger mess when I'm trying to clean them. They're wonderful. I absolutely love them. Oh, okay, then of course you've got to have your Wonder Wedges. Um, just make sure when you get these, the most important, some people like the ones that are more absorbent, some people like the ones that are less absorbent, but what's most important is to make sure they don't have anything added to them like the vitamin E. Um, then I have my modeling wedges. And what I do is after I find a modeling pattern that I really like in a sponge that I've plucked is I keep the sponge. And then that also serves to remind me of the colors that I use. Like I have this package that I use for my ethnic, and then I have another one that I use for my Caucasian. So I can go down the rainbow um, and repeat um, prior methods that I've used that I've liked. And then I also, because um, a lot of times when you're reborning, you do color washes, either to correct the color of the vinyl or to correct um, the color that you've come up with so far with the baby. Like if it's too red, you know, if you're, you want to correct that with some green. So what I do is I use glass containers. These ones are from Bullion, but I suppose um, baby jars would also work. 
So I mix them up in here because you always mix way more than what it is that you need. And then when I'm done, I just put the cap on it and store it away and it's good to go. And usually when I use it again, I've got to put some more uh, thinner in it, but that's no problem. And then I put the color of the wash here on the top and also the colors I use to um, create that wash. So there's your green for correcting, got blue for correcting, yellow for correcting, and just makes a really nice tint, especially on the smaller newborn babies. And then burnt um, umber. Um, if you've ever done a baby and it's been pale or you're seeing that the skin tone just doesn't seem to be coming together and you just want to know how to make that baby pop, I am telling you, burnt umber. You just wash that all over the baby and then pop. It's amazing. You, who'd have thought? I mean, that's a scary color, especially to put on a light skin baby, but it works. I'm telling you. Um, when I am doing ethnic babies, what I have learned is if you've ever seen an ethnic baby that's been done and it looks dirty, um, you get the crud in the creases or it's blotchy the darker color likes to grab the vinyl and it doesn't give you a lot of time to work with it because it's just, it's kind of like blue. Blue just kind of gets right into the vinyl. Um, so if you put just a tiny bit and I usually use, I have a little baby medicine dropper, a drop or two, depending on the amount. If I'm using a small amount, then one drop. If I'm using like a wash color, I'll use two maybe because you don't want to use too much either because it will, affect your overall curing time on your paint but it will it's like a paint extender so it'll give you more time to work with the paint so that it doesn't get stuck it, it will make it so you can still move it around really fantastic it makes a huge difference in the ethnic babies now for some of the other tools that I use this is the Genesis heat set eraser. You can either use it dry um, to get little puddles out or for correcting too much paint up the nose or in the ears or in the mouth or you can put it in water or thinner and wash off a small like if you're doing fingernails and you mess up a fingernail you just put a little water or some thinner on there and just wipe it right off. Um, you can also do the same with <clears throat> toothpicks and toothpicks will help with correcting smaller parts like the tips of the fingernails. It will also help you do details like milk spots and capillaries. And um, just, and a lot of times there will be like a little spot in like a crease or a bubble or something where paint likes to get in there. You know, use this in there to, you know, fix that problem. Toothpicks are very, very handy. And if you get anything stuck in your teeth while you're snacking, you know, there you go. It's just right there. Okay, so what else do we have? We have, and this was another important lesson I learned, because a lot of times when you first start reborning, you see a lot of people using those plastic paint palettes. I don't recommend them at all. They are a pain in the derriere to clean. I mean, if you think about it, when you're doing your dishes and you've made a greasy meal or you know, you've got bacon, you cooked bacon, you've got your bacon fat, you put it in a, a plastic bowl, you're going to be cussing yourself out for a week because it is so hard to get oil off of plastic. The same thing applies to the oil paint. It is so hard to clean. I like to paint. I don't like to clean the paint. <laughs> so I use um, glass containers. Uh, these I got from the dollar store. And then also... The secondhand store is a good resource for glass bowls and stuff at a reasonable price. And then I also I have one white one, and that's because sometimes when you're mixing a color, you need it to not be clear so you can get um, a better idea of the, the color that you're going to end up with. And... The other thing that I use is I use Mona Lisa. Now, initially I was going to my Joann Fabrics and buying it, and I was getting a little bottle for like 20 bucks. Well, I found at Michael's, I can get this ginormous thing, 
for $35. And I definitely use it enough to justify the big jug. And then also I use to clean my brush is the Windsor Newton brush cleaner really works fantastically in getting these oil paints off of your brush and keeping them nice and fresh and restored and clean. Oh, and I forgot unscented baby wipes. These are also the great eraser. Let's say you're doing a color wash and you put it on the baby and you're like, oh no, this is not going to work. You just hurry up and grab one of these, an unscented baby wipe, and you just wash it right off. If you spill something, you can wash it right off. You can also use it on your own hands. You know, very, very handy to have here. And because they are baby wipes, they don't, there's not a bunch of lint going on. So you don't have that to worry about. And let's see. So I think that that is everything that is in my reborning bag. Now I'm going to be following up with a video that's going to, I'm going to record me reborning the Kimberly sculpt and she is going to be an ethnic skin tone. I'm going to be going for a, um, a Islander uh, skin tone and I'm just going to go through and record what I'm doing and then I'm going to do a voiceover. Um, so if you never see that video arrive, it's because my video editing skills suck and I was not able to uh, complete that mission, but I'm going to give it my best shot, darn it. Um, and also, and I'll mention it because you'll probably see him in the video because um, I'm going to be doing him at the same time. So in case you see this little fella pop up, uh, this is one I bought from another artist that bought it from another artist that bought it from someone else. So I have no idea who originally reborn him, but he came from a smoking household. And so I wanted to see what I could do about that. And actually we have been able to thus far completely remove um, the smoke smell from him. As a matter of fact, he doesn't even smell like the soap that he smelt like when he initially came here. So I'm going to do some, there's some touch up work that needs to be done on him and I wanna um, do that touch up work and then I also wanna seal him and also kind of make sure that that smell isn't going to come back and go from there because of course, sometimes you can make a smell go away for a little while but then it kind of seeps through, especially with something porous like vinyl. Of course, when I sell him, I'm going to disclose the fact that he has been in a smoking household um, because I know some people have some pretty serious allergies to cigarette smoke and of course I don't want them snuggling with a baby that might make them sick um, but I just wanted to see about the smell portion itself so we'll see how that goes so he might make some debuts in there but one of the things I really liked about him when I saw him is I, I don't know who did him but I really like the rooting job that they did I think it's really cute and I think that the front part, they really did a good job of showcasing that sweet little face. Look at that face. You can just pinch those cheeks. Okay, so keep your eyes open for that video. And in the meantime, please keep your fingers crossed for me that I can get it recorded, get the voiceover done, get it all smushed together into something that makes sense. Um, in the meantime... How about if you let me know what's in your bag, your reboarding bag, your diaper bag, your purse, you know, whatever. Um, say hello, click like down below, subscribe, and please, for the sake of God, just say hello. Click down there and say hello. I see people are watching. Say hi, hi. Um, anyways, you guys have a wonderful day, and uh, go watch Trailer Park uh, Tammy's what's in my bag. You'll love it. It is absolutely hilarious. You guys have a wonderful evening. Bye.